Hi, welcome back to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. In this video, this will be part three of the Milvice stop, which we started last week. Now in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to flip the part in the vise and do all the cam operations. Part four, we'll flip back to the machine and I'll show you how I machined the bottom side and the side hole here. So let's take a look at this, guys. Now, here's the base plate of the Milvice stop, which my good friend Michael Connor drew from Michael Connor Woodwork, and who's graciously, graciously supplied us this part here to do. So what I've done for you today, I've actually modeled my vise, modeled the parallel strips, and I've flipped the part upside down, and I'm gonna show you how I machine the second operation. Now from my original file, you can see that there was three operations, the base top ops, base bottom ops, and base end op. So there was three in total. <clears throat> now this is how I actually did it. I flipped my part, I put two parallel strips in the vise, flipped my part upside down, and you can see here the strategy that I've used. Now let's start with the basic, uh, basic of basics, guys. Let's look at the, um, the actual setup. Now, it sort of looks a little bit weird where my work um, offset is, but let me just orientate this around for you. Now, not many machinists like to do this. Oh, I do. You'll find this common in woodwork machining that a lot of woodwork CNC woodworking guys will opt for the bottom of the part to be Z0. I like to do this here in my uh, milling machine and metal machining as well because uh, I find I get a little bit more accurate uh, in my Z height this way here, that, that works for me, put it that way. So you can see here guys, I've picked that bottom left corner uh, in the Cartesian coordinates, and you can see it there a bit better. You can see my X axes, my Y axes, so red is, uh, red is X, green is Y, and blue is Z, and that's upwards there guys. In my stock, I've had no additional stock except for a stock top ops offset here. Top offset, sorry. And you can see, this actually, these figures here actually mirrored uh, what I had for the second operation. So I was ex I was right on the size for 60 in width, right on the money for 40 for the for the Y dimension, and that was pretty much I adjusted that value here. That's where I got that 8.7 from to get that 31.2. Okay, let's put it back up here into a home view. I'm just going to regenerate these tool path for you. So to start off, guys, uh, to machine this, I needed to machine the hat off this, okay? So I would have went up here and I would have gone 2D face, and when 2D face came up, that's what I was left with here. So once again, I went over to my tool library and I selected my 50 mil shell mill, uh, which is in here, SkyFi. If you like, guys, how about this? I'll put my tool library in the description of this video. So if you wanna download my tool library and have a look at the feeds and speeds that I use, you're welcome to do that. Just bear in mind that I'm a very conservative machinist, okay? I, I don't push hard. I don't have a reason to push hard, guys, okay? I'm not in production. I'm in here to do training and teaching and videos like that, guys, all right? So some of you will probably laugh at my feeds and speed, but that's fine. Hey, rarely do I break an end mill, though, so that's a good point to it. So after picking my 50 mil shell mill, guys, I, I moved along to the tabs here. I pretty much left everything the way it was here. <clears throat> now, this is where I changed a few factors in here. I gave my shell mill a 25 mil pass extension. I do that so the cutter doesn't leave a scoring mark in the part. So when I, it comes down here and traverses right across the entire part and then comes back again. And you've got, see here, I've got direction both ways. So it's gonna cut, drop down, cut, drop down, cut, drop down, okay? I've ticked multiple depths here, and I've told it to machine down in one mil increments, okay, with that uh, 25 mil pass extension. I've leave stock to leave was turned off. I've then moved over from here, guys. So you can see those tool paths there, the different uh, depths dropping down in Z. To do that center hole, guys, I did a bore here, a boring operation. I would have come up here, gone 2D, 2D bore. That would have opened a dialog box that looked like this. Moving along, I would, you know, like I said, guys, it's sequential. You pick your tool, uh, you come along. So I would pick my tool that I wanted to. Now, the reason I had to do a boring cycle here, sorry, I'll just digress for a second, is because I drilled from the top down. Uh, now, this hole was, I think, uh, six points, oh, there you go, 6.35 diameter. 
uh, and I drilled with a five mil drill bit. So that's gonna open that hole up for me. Coming along, I would have picked the face. Uh, moving along, I just would have made uh, stock top to hole bottom, okay? From here, I've left that all set up as standard, one mil pitch as it's boring down, and pretty much left everything default, guys, and you can see that there. The spot drill, guys, I've come in to spot those two holes. Uh, so I would have come up here to drilling to do that. I would have picked a drilling operation. It would have opened this dialog box like such. I would have picked my tool two, which is my spot drill. I've used selected points, guys, here. And I've come into my third tab and I've gave it from the hole bottom minus two, which gives a nice little dimple like, a, like you would with a center punch if you were to hit a bit of material and I've just left it as drilling, wrap it out, okay? All right, so along here now, guys, went to the next one, drill holes. Now, I could have done this, I could have clicked drilling again, or I could have right-clicked and picked create a derived operation drilling, click drill. That's another way you could have done it, and that way then it would have kept that ge uh, geometry and you just wanted to change a few things. So edit. So I would have picked my drill, Come along here, select face. Now, now if I'd done a derive operation up here to get this one here, this would have been left as selected points from my previous operation. So I would have had to change it to select face. And I've come down in here and I've picked the bottom face of that. And then I've just adjusted it here. I said uh, from the top here, guys, so top, uh, so top height, hole top, bottom height, hole bottom. Now I've changed this up here, I've gone chip breaking, and I've changed the accumulator pec depth to five mil. Uh, rigid tapping, guys, once again. Uh, now, don't forget tapping lives under a drilling cycle. Uh, to attain that, I could have clicked here, or once again, remember, you can come up here and go create a derived operation, drilling, drill, to get this dialog box to open like such. And I would have picked the tool that I wanted, so my rigid tap, moved along, I would have actually picked the face. I would have ensured that it said hole top to hole bottom. Um, I, I must have left that check there, guys, but that's fine. Just remember, it's a blind hole. Always be cautious tapping into a blind hole, guys, because if you bottom your tap out, you can break your tap, okay? Um, and I would have ensured that I come in here and pick right tapping, okay? Now my Skyfire won't peck tap, so um, so yeah, right tapping. Last but not least, guys, is this outside contour. And to do that, remember, 2D, 2D contour. Once 2D contour opens, it comes up in a dialog box like so. Here I'm using uh, tool two, which is my spot drill. I would have picked these three chains here. Notice that I've picked the bottom chamfer and the inside one here. Remember, this is the part that Michael has drawn. I have not amended his design file at all. Coming across, guys, I left that all to default. Aha, uh -huh. but in here, remember, like the last video, I've clicked chamfer and gave it 0 0.2 width and a tip offset of 0.05. And I've changed it up here, guys. Um, where is it? This one here. Aha, uh -huh. I've told it to do conventional milling. Now, someone picked it up in the last video. I think it was Luke. Says, hey Aaron, why did you uh, climb mill with everything else but um, conventional mill with your spot drill? For some reason, my spot drill's been giving me a burr when I do um, climb milling. So I went back to conventional milling and I found the burr is no longer in existence when I'm breaking that part. All right. Okay, let's simulate that, guys, really quickly. I'm going to zoom out here. So come up to here, guys, to simulate. Then click simulate. Um, you'll notice there's no red in my timeline, so there's no uh, crash detection or anything like that. You can see it buzzing it down from the top there, guys. It's popping down. Now we can look at this. Now the good thing that I picked the bottom height for the Z, um, Z height, guys, you notice all my Z operations are a positive movement. So it's actually giving me real height, what it should be, okay? You can see it popping down here. I'm gonna go to the next tool path. Here's my ball, you can watch it. Spot drill, you can see that nice little divot it puts in there. There's my peck drilling cycle. Up comes my rigid tapping now with that six mil rigid tap and boom, down we go. Last but not least is the 2D contour and the chamfer to break that burr. Uh, I don't have a tumbler, so I wanna break that burr. I hate touching parts to clean them up, so 
you should be able to clean them up with your mill. There we go. So there's the bottom operations, guys. Very simple. Buzz the hat off, you know, spot, spot, drill, drill, tap, share for break the burr. Let's have a look at the last operation. And you see, once again, I've used the vise to give you a better look at how I'm doing this. And this is really simple, guys. You can see where I've set up my work offset here. Okay, so in my setup here, I've used stock, uh, stock box point, all right? I've told which is uh, X, which is Y, which is Z. Um, I'm at the top here, as you can see. I've come here, I've got no additional stock is added, so now I'm, this part is to size, and I just want this hole done, all right? So I'm gonna regenerate those tool paths. And this is quite simple, guys. All 2D strategies here. You know me, boring old 2D. I've done a boring cycle, so I've clicked boring, and you can see here, I've used tool seven, I've picked that hole, um, climb milling, uh, I've made sure I haven't got stock, see stock to leave is turned off, that's crucial. Um, once, you, once you do your hole too guys, if you did a few of them, you get to get a feel for your machine, you know if you're cutting undersize or oversize. If you were, you could uh, tickle it there a little bit if you wanted to, remember, a negative figure, if you hover over your screen, you'll see it actually comes up. Uh, here, if I touch that there again, guys, it will tell you negative stop means to remove more, positive number means to remove less. And click OK. Um, OK, down here now to 2D contour. That's to break the edge, I would have come down here, 2D contour. Open up this dialog box here. I've selected my tool once again. Remember, just work your way from the top, work your way across the tabs. Um, next tab would have been select the chain you wanted. Um, that was stock standard, left all those at default, made sure chamfer was checked. I'm doing right conventional in the deburring of the part and everything else is pretty much left standard, stock standard guys, as default, the, the way Fusion comes. Uh, so let's um, simulate that. There's my boring and there's the breaking the edge guys. Alrighty, so there we have it guys. You've had, um, remember last week I showed you how to do the top side and that involved, I took a little bit more time to show you that. So if you're not understanding what I'm saying here, maybe it's a good time to go back and revisit and watch part one um, and then you'll get the gist of what I'm doing for part two, oh, sorry, for part three. And uh, alrighty, thank you very much guys. I will post another video very soon. Uh, look for part four and you'll see me machining the bottom side and that, uh, the bottom side of the part and that side part. Good on you, thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure you come back now, bye bye.